Hi, my name is Sergei Proknevsky, and I am a senior motion graphics designer at Fox Sports. And I also run a website, a video tutorial website, called ukramedia.com. And there I teach uh, practical motion graphic knowledge in a very quick and easy way. And so today I'm going to show you some tricks and tips in After Effects. And I'm very passionate about tricks and tips uh, because when I first started out in this industry, I, I kind of struggled. Um, you know, the fast pace of the design world kind of got the best of me. And so I realized that things weren't going to get any better. So I had to get better. And so I started learning tricks and different uh, shortcuts to speed up my workflow so that I could um, concentrate on the creative content. And so, yeah, I'm very passionate about it. So let me show you some tricks here. Number one is splitting layers. And so in After Effects, if you select a layer, uh, and if you want to split it, you can just do Control-Shift-D, and it will split where your time indicator is at. So that's kind of cool. Number two is a center anchor point. And so for this, uh, let's say I draw a shape layer in my composition here. It could be anything. So something like this is good. And a lot of times when you draw a shape layer in After Effects, uh, the anchor point is centered according to your composition. And that can be a bit of a problem sometimes because if, you know, if I hit rotate, it rotates around my anchor point. But what if I want to rotate it around my shape layer here? So how do I uh, attach this anchor point to the center of this shape layer? How do I do that? So one way to do it, you can hit Y on your keyboard and you can literally drag it and kind of line it, line it up. But that's not as accurate. It takes uh, way too many steps. There's a shortcut for it. It's um, Control alt Home, And it will center your anchor point to the center of this shape layer. And it's very cool. Number three is center in the view. And so let's say here's an example. I'm going to take this text and put it in here and this shape in here. What if, let's say, I want to center both of these uh, to my composition here? How do I do it quickly? I mean, you can drag it and kind of line them up here, but that's too many steps. So the best way to do it is just selecting both of them and uh, holding Control Home on your keyboard and it will center it. Now, important thing to point out, uh, it, it cent centers the object based on the anchor points uh, of your layer. For instance, if I move the anchor point to here and do control home, it's gonna center it based on where my anchor point is at. So that's an that's a, you know, important thing to think about. And number four is uh, copy with property links. And so for this one, I have three uh, Ucromedia logos here. And what if, let's say, I want to take the scale property of one logo here, and what if I want for them to be affected on all the other layers? How do I do it? Uh, one way you can do it is, is holding uh, Alt on the keyboard and uh, clicking over here on the stopwatch. You can kind of attach scale to here, but that's one too many steps. The quick way to do it, just select the scale and do Control alt c to copy um, with property links. And then you can select the other properties that you want to paste to and do Control alt v and as you can see, the expression has been applied here. And now if I scale one, all the other ones move as well. All right, number five is uh, tool creates masks. And a lot of people might not know this one, but when you create, let's say, a shape layer in After Effects, you, uh, in, what if, let's say, I want to mask the, like, the top portion of this shape layer? How do I do it? And you know, if this was a solid, normally I would just go here to Rectangle Tool and try to mask it. But the problem is with shape layers, it creates another shape layer, and that's, that's a bit problematic. So how do we uh, actually use a mask instead of the shape? And so anytime you select any of these tools, like any of these or a pen tool, if you uh, go over here to the right, you can see two icons. First one is a shape layer, and the second one is a mask uh, tool. So if you select that, and you can draw a mask now right directly onto the uh, shape layer, which is really cool. All right, number six is uh, shift parenting behavior. So let me, let me show you an example. I have like a quick uh, animation, very simple, nothing complicated. So what if I want to place this object to my right uh, uh, on top of this left object and parent it together to where it, it's affected by, uh, by the movement of it? And I guess one way you can do it is just uh, selecting this object and then just uh, linking it up to the blue object here. And I mean, it's, it's parented, but the thing is, it's not in the center. I guess next thing you can do is select the position keyframes and, uh, and kind of like manually center it. But that's one too many steps, uh, and I do not want to make those steps. So the quick way to do this is uh, all you do is hold Shift on your keyboard and pick whip to the uh, blue shape layer, and it will automatically drop your uh, animation into the blue, uh, blue shape layer like this. So that's a quick way to do this. All right, number seven 
is uh, replacing content in a timeline. So let's say I have this uh, image in here, and what if I want to replace it with uh, like this blue image in here? So how do I do it? What's the quickest way to, to get this done? And all you have to do is just select this layer, hold Alt on your keyboard, and click and drag, and it will automatically replace it. So that's number seven. Uh, number eight is math. And what it is now, like in After Effects, uh, you can do simple math within a timeline, which is so cool. Let's say, here's the position uh, property of this uh, logo. And let's say I want to add uh, 150 to 540. So how do I do that? Just say plus 150 and hit enter and it will add that. Let's say I want half of that. So how do I you know, divide by two? will get you the half of that. And so the whole idea is you can literally do equations here, you know, times five plus 50, and it will give you the number here. So you don't have to do it in your brain. I use this feature quite often. Number nine is uh, a, comp a composition mini flow chart. I use this one daily because let's say I have a composition here and I kind of get into different compositions and I kind of get my way through all these comps and I get lost. And what if I want to track my way back to where I came from? What's the quick way uh, to achieve that? And all you have to do, just click on this icon or hit tab on your keyboard anywhere. And then you have this little feature here and it kind of highlights the path you took to your composition and you can kind of track your way back to the original composition. All right, number 10 is Align Tools. Now, if you've used Adobe Illustrator, Align Tools is something that a lot of illustrators love. So let's say I have these objects in here, and I want to align them based on the selection. So how do I, let's say, I want to align them on the X axis. How do I do that? So you go to these Align Tools in here, and you have the same options you would in Adobe Illustrator. So now you can hit this and align them quickly. But what if, let's say, this one is slightly shifted, and I want them to have equal distance between each other. How do I do that? There's a quick button here, just click that and it will equally give you distance between each, uh, each shape layer or whatever it is. I use this quite often when I have to design uh, LED boards for like uh, stadiums and um, arenas and they're so long and I have to do a bunch of text. So a line tool came in so handy in that. I, I love it. All right, and also by the way, you can select one and you know, align it to the top, to the bottom. I mean, the sky is the limit what you can do here. All right, number 11 is uh, uh, solo properties. And I'm gonna go full screen on this area here. So you know how sometimes in After Effects you have all these extra jazz that you don't wanna use. And it just takes up your screen and if you have a small screen, it's, it's a problem. So how do I, let's say, solo only few properties? Let's say I wanna solo this one uh, and like maybe that one. So I'm gonna hold control to, sh uh, shift, uh, to select them. And all you have to do, this is so cool, hit S twice on your keyboard and it will solo only what you selected. So, and uh, all right, number 12 is kind of like the same thing, it's height properties. So essentially, uh, this uh, last time we, we soloed stuff, but how do we hide properties? Let's say, I just wanna hide some of this stuff. Uh, all you do is hold down Shift, Alt, and click on anything that you click is gonna hide. You can do like a full group or just individual stuff. And this feature is really cool. I use it uh, daily as well. All right, number 13 is uh, reversing uh, parent value. And so for this, I have a quick little example, just a text in a, in a shape layer. And w what if I want to uh, take this text and parent the rotation property of it to the rotation property of this null? And now, like, if it's parented, if I move the null, rotation of the null, the text moves with it as well. But what if I want to reverse it? What if I want the null to go to the right and then the, sh the text to go to the left? How do I do that? There's a quick way you can do it by, by just adding times here at times, uh, times like negative one, and it will reverse that. Basically now if I do this, you can see that it's reversing what I'm trying to do here, which is pretty handy sometimes. All right, number 14 is uh, sequence layers. And this one, a lot of people kind of overlook. We all know that it's there, but we overlook this feature. So let's say uh, I have this quick animation of a bunch of layers, the same animation, they're all spread out. What if I want to offset each layer, so I want them to come in differently? So one way to do it is select all of the uh, layers you want to offset, like so. Let me pull this up some. And then next, uh, you go, let's say, forward four, four uh, frames. Let's, I'm going to offset by four frames. So page down four times. One, two, three, four. And then I'm going to hold Alt, close brackets to uh, shorten them by, you know, at the uh, time indicator here. And then I'm gonna click on the layer and do uh, keyframe assistant and then sequence layers. 
And so now, if I hit OK, it's going to offset them. But the problem is it, the layers are too short. So it's OK. You can just go to the end of your composition and do Control alt uh, close bracket while the layers are selected, and it'll extend it. So now you, you can see how easily you can offset layers. But here's another cool thing that I really love. So what if I want to have a different, uh, like offset them differently? And so you can do that by uh, the way you select them. So if you select them differently, uh, you can, you know, whatever, whatever it is, just select, uh, select all your layers differently. And once you're done, just uh, click on it and do uh, keyframe assistant. And then, uh, what? let's see, where did it go? Sequence layers, here we go. Hit OK, and now it offset it based on your selection. So you can go to the end here and extend your layers again. Uh, Alt, uh, close bracket. And so now they pop in differently. So that's cool. All right, number 15 is uh, a reset, uh, rotation, and scale. So for this example, I have um, just five logos here, and they all have different rotation and different scale. And what's the quickest way for me to reset them? Because I don't want to go to each layer individually and, you know, scale it down to 100 or and rotate, you know, set the rotation to zero. It just takes way too much time. And the quick, quickest way to do it, just select them and then go over here over to the selection tool here and double click on it and it will automatically reset scale. And if you double click on the rotation here, it will automatically reset the rotation of each layer that you have selected. All right, number 16 is uh, delete all effects from selected layers. And so for this example, I have a uh, just these uh, different layers and they have different if effects applied. You can actually see some of them here. But what if I want to erase all of them? And you know, it's, it's time consuming doing it one by one. So what you can do is just select all of them and do Control Shift E and it will wipe out every effect from each layer. It's a quick shortcut, but it's very useful. Number 17 is scaling multiple keyframes. And let's say I have this quick animation here. Let me cache it real quick. Just a quick little position animation. And what if I want to scale this animation down some? Like, I want to shorten it. What's the best way to do it? Like, I hope you're not doing this. I hope you're not manually moving each keyframe. It just will take you forever to do. The quickest way is just select them and hold Alt and click on the last keyframe of your animation. And you can drag it left and right. And you can, you can see they're, they're uh, moving together as a unit. And so you can shorten it like, like so. And now you can preview it and uh, it'll give you exactly what you want. Number 18 is uh, reverse keyframes. So the same animation here for reverse keyframes. So if I preview this, uh, I can actually reverse keyframes. Like I hope you're not manually doing it. That, that will take you forever. So you just select uh, the keyframes and right click here and go to keyframe assistant and time reverse keyframes. It will actually reverse your animation. All right, number 19 is uh, altering multiple keyframes. And for this, I have a quick example, like a rotation example here, just a simple animation. What if I wanted to add 30 more degrees to each keyframe here? Uh, how would I do it? So first, you would have to select all of them. And now you can just add here, just so say plus 30. And it will automatically add 30 uh, to all, the, uh, all of your keyframes here. So you can see like so. But what if I want to go the other way? What if, what if I want to subtract 30? How do I do that? Let's undo here for a second. I guess the logical thing to do would be negative 30, and you would think that it would give you that, but really it just sets each keyframe to negative 30, which is not exactly what I'm going for here. So, but what you do, you just say, instead of negative 30, you say plus negative 30, and then it will do the exact same thing, but to the other side. All right, number 20 is uh, paste layers at current time. This one is useful and a lot of people overlook that one. So let's say I copy this uh, layer, control C, right? What if I want for it to, to be in here? I want to paste it in here. And a lot of times when you do control V, it, it will paste it, but it will paste it at the beginning of your composition. And sometimes, you know, that's another step and then you have to drag it. It's just not very, you know, it's not a time saving tip for sure. So what you have to do is just control Alt V and it will paste it right where your time indicator is at. So that's really useful. Number 21 is set work area to duration of selected layers. And so what if I want to set the in and out point of these layers? Like right now, as you can see, my composition has some, some room here. But what if I want to set the out point here and in point here? What's the quickest way to do that? And you can just select it like so and do, uh, do Control-Alt-B. And it will take the in and out to selected layers. And then you can do you know, trim comp and get there very quickly. Number 22 
is add or remove remove keyframes from current time. And you know how in After Effects, if you hit, uh, one second, let me pull this up. If you hit A on your keyboard, you can see anchor point, then P, you can see position, S, scale, T, opacity, and our rotation. But wouldn't it be cool that if you could set keyframes with a shortcut? And you can, actually. If you, if you just remember Alt-Shift, if you hold down Alt-Shift, uh, let's say A, it will set a keyframe for anchor. Uh, the same, if you want to take it away, you do Alt-Shift A and it will take it away. The same thing for position, Alt-Shift P, Alt-Shift S for scale, Alt-Shift R for rotation, Alt-Shift T for uh, opacity. So you can see how quickly you can just uh, set keyframes. And uh, I use one, uh, that one as well quite often. All right, number 23 is, let's see, it's uh, expressions to keyframe. And let's say for this, I'm just gonna add a quick little wiggle expression to my scale property here. Just do wiggle and uh, let's do like 500, just a simple classic wiggle expression. And what if I want to convert that to a keyframe? In 3D world, we call it baking. What if I wanna bake that down? So uh, all you have to do is set one keyframe and then right click on this keyframe and do uh, keyframe assistant right here and then do convert expression to keyframe and it will give you basically keyframes for that expression. And you can take this expression away now, and you can see that it's still doing what, you, what it was doing before, but only with keyframes. And with keyframes, you can do more stuff. You can adjust them and, and et cetera. All right, number 24 is moving masks. So let's say I wanted to like mask this area some. I'm gonna go to ellipse tool here. Let's select the ellipse tool. And I'm gonna just drag it. Make sure you select your layer, by the way. I'm gonna drag it over my uh, object here. But a lot of times when you drag it, you're, you're kind of locked, uh, locked out on, on, in this kind of move. Like you can't really move the mask. You can just move what you're adjusting here. So how do I move the whole mask? So all you have to do while this is live, just hold down sh uh, space bar on your keyboard. And now you can actually move it around and set it to wherever area you want it to be. All right, so number 25 is uh, maximizing frame uh, with a shortcut. So let's say I have, uh, you know, I have to go into a certain window, like I want to scale some window. Let's say I'm working this timeline here and I want to see this timeline only. What's the shortcut to see like only the timeline full screen? And all you have to do is just hold down tilt on your keyboard and whatever area you hover over, you can go full screen when you push it. So this one is pretty useful. All right, number 26 is uh, turn off all other solo switches. So if you have a bunch of layers and uh, if you're like me, sometimes you solo stuff like crazy, you know, like you have a bunch of solos. And what if you just want to solo one time and unsolo the others? Like what's the quick way, uh, quick way to achieve that? And all you have to do, just hold down Alt on your keyboard and click on this, one of the solo uh, buttons here. Just click on that as you hit solo and it will automatically uh, keep your solo that you clicked on and deselect all the other ones. All right, number 27 is a CC vignette. And here's a footage of my son, Elijah, and his cousin, uh, Ashton. And as you can see, we just have a footage here, but how would I add a vignette to this footage? And all you have to do, I mean, used to you would bring in a solid and then feather it, just way too many steps. But now you can just use a plugin called CC vignette here. You just drag it to your uh, layer here. And now you can instantly create a cool vignette Hardly, you know, in seconds, which is really cool. All right, I think I'm gonna stop here. My time is about up. Again, uh, if you want to see more shortcuts like these, head on over to ukramedia.com. I have about 93 of them as of today. Uh, there are definitely useful, you know, there's something about when you speed up your workflow, you have more time for the creative content. You know, you, you actually can create instead of you know spending barely any time because it shows and i've seen huge breakthrough in my life as well so but anyway i want to thank adobe for allowing me to be here i had a blast meeting the the superstars of adobe uh, it's just been amazing and again my name is sergey braknevsky and thank you for watching